G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, since last time I have completed the scratch edition of the torpedo booms on both sides of the sailors. They're um, little booms that fold out and there's a big sort of mesh netting so that when the um, ship was um, moored in harbour or basically anywhere it's stationary, it couldn't do it while I was running around, the torpedoes theoretically would hit and disintegrate or break down in the nets or get tangled, um, rather than going in and hitting the hull. They sort of had these for quite a number of years, and they proved pretty bloody useless. I mean, they got in the way when the ships were underway, and they couldn't deploy them when they were actually travelling. They were only useful when the ships were stationary, in which case you can do a whole lot of other things to protect a ship in port than worry about the torpedo boat coming in and launching a torpedo at your ship. But anyhow, it was a fashion for a while, and ships before World War I and into the very early part of World War I they basically had these torpedo net booms. Now the next problem child, I mean there's not that much wrong with this kit but um, you know apart from the fact there's no stand so I had to make that and there's none of these. The, um, the bow here is very devoid of any detail. It's, it's just very plain. I mean there's only a couple of little panel lines here and the portholes and you know well, I'm going to drill out the portholes, yeah, sure. But I checked a lot of photos and I found there was a whole lot of ribbing that went on here. And there certainly were panel lights or plate lights for the lower hull. And I'm also going to mark the plimsoll line, right? The watermark, if you like. That line that basically defines how low the ship should sit in the water and also how, you know, basically how high it should be out of the water. It is also used well, more in merchant ships, to make sure that the load is level. Because the last thing you want is a, your ship sort of listing to one side or being, you know, bow or stern heavy. So this plimsoll line would make sure the ship was had its load weighted evenly. And that would protect it because you don't want to go into like a high sea or a storm and your ship is not sitting as the manufacturer intended. They tended to capsize. So we'll look at that and how I basically work out a way to draw my own plimsoll line. Because normally, if you don't know, normally on just about every kit that I've ever bought, there's a tiny little mark by the manufacturer. But again, that's missing. So, you know, we had no stand. We have none of these booms, even though they're on the artwork. We've got no markings here, and we've got no plimsoll line. I think they left the hull to the work experience kit. Really? <laughs> so this is what I've done. All the portholes have been drilled out. I've put a whole lot of marks on there. They're just scribe lines to create the plating effects. I've added little strips all the way through here on the uh, top part of the hull, which mimic the strips that were on the ship, as I found from the photos. There were also little plates that were on there, so they went on. I basically used the photographic evidence to add all this extra detail. And it wasn't that hard to do, but I think it's really lifted it really given it a much more interesting look. That is what I've managed to accomplish and that's what I'm going to show you in this video is how to do your own plimsoll line and how to add extra detail to the bow of the ship. Would you like to see that? Great! Roll the music! <laughs> now marking the plimsoll line. This is very important for everything we'll do next because we need to make sure that all our plate lines and everything we do will be level. And sometimes it is level to the deck, but the deck could be upswept. You don't know. So you need to work out where that plimsoll line is. Well, normally you've got a little mark on there the manufacturer puts there for you. But in this case, I'm going to have to do it myself. So how do we do that? Well, luckily, everything I do is like dry fit and pull apart. So we can remove our deck pieces here and then my stand just unscrews. But what I'll do is protect all those little booms that I've uh, already made. I'd hate to wreck those little guys. I've got something soft to rest them on. So the beauty of what I did here is that this part of the base can come off all right, with that all out the way, now we've got to work out where this line goes. And you could try measuring and you could try putting a rule up against this and there's all kinds of method or even laying a piece of tape along. They will work to a certain extent. 
but one of the easiest methods is to set up a jig and then run a pencil on something that's fairly fixed and run it along okay but to do that you first need to get your hull level and sure you could I could take these pedestals off the bottom here they unscrew and then I could set it on the base of the hull that may be level right but you don't know hulls are usually curved and they can have upswept bows and upswept sterns all kinds of things so in this case we're not going to chance that there is an easy way to do this when I looked at all the photos when I had a look at what was going on, well, we had a couple of indicators. These booms, at least at the beginning and the end, are just underneath where the plimsoll line is, okay. But also, if you have a look at the drawings and the photos, there's a point here, just where that hull starts to curve away, and that's the lower point of the plimsoll line. So that's easy enough to work out. So that's fine for positioning, but how do we get the level? To work out the level of the plimsoll line, there's a clue on the hull, and it's this straight line here, okay, this plate line. It runs all the way along. It's designed for where the booms fold up to, and if you follow it all the way through, it then becomes level with that stern deck. Okay, so that line is perfectly level all the way through. And you can check this with the photos because you can have a look at the ship underway and that becomes readily apparent. That is a continuous line all the way through and it's always the same distance to the plimsoll line. Okay, so that's our clue. So now knowing those distances, you could kind of make some marks and basically, you know, try and do it up this way and run a pencil along. But there's actually an easier way, at least with this model. If we turn it over, So if I now measure the height from this deck to this stroke line, okay, and I think from memory it was about 15 millimeters, right? Now my stern part of that stroke line, when I followed it all the way through, right, is actually the deck level. And that deck level at the moment is sitting pretty well on my cutting mat. So I need to raise that deck level by the height I measured at the front, which was 15 millimeters. And I just needed to find something. It just happened to be my chisel and its holder was exactly the right height. And especially when I rolled it in and it sat just about there. I then measured that and it gave me the correct height. So that is now level. With the bow now sitting nice and flat, it's sitting very well on my cutting mat. And with the stern propped up to this height, my straight line is perfectly level all the way through. Okay, so that works. That I know is correct. Okay, so from that we can draw our plimsoll line. Now, the plimsoll line will need to start, as I said, there's a point over here that I've already identified on the bow. And then I also know that it starts just above the front booms here all the way along. Now the stern, the booms are a little bit different in that they end up being a lot longer and they're slightly shallower in their arm length, but it's all it's all relative. Okay, so what you can do is you can buy an actual ship plimsoll line or waterline marking tool, which is basically an adjuster for your pencil. And you can go and spend all the money on that, and that's fine, that'll do the job. Or you could just get a block of wood about the right height. And I lucked out in that my plimsoll line here was exactly the height of my block of wood. So then it was a fairly easy matter for me just to go and I get my line all the way along. Because you'll notice the line appears to be slightly wider here. That's only because viewed side on, right, as it should be, it'll be correct. But because the hull curves away, when you've got areas like the stern, and sometimes the bow, this will be actually a little bit wider. Because some people try and mark it and use a, like a single piece of um, masking tape that's exactly the width of the line. Yeah, except it's wider here because of the angle, right? Because it's curved away. So obviously when you straight up and down, it's like that. When you're at the angle, it's longer, you know? Pythagoras! <laughs> so I figured out, yep, I could do that. So then it was just a simple matter of 
basically I can move that out the way a bit and I just start at one end and I would run all the way along nice even continuous motion now the trick here is to make sure that the hull does not move it doesn't flex or it doesn't tip and so I put a heavy weight behind there and my um, my trusty little work cloth okay so I made sure that, that was all weighted down and held in position and that really helped so then when I I pushed although you don't want to push too much you want, you want a very light touch when you're doing this and you want to be consistent don't let you you know everything must be consistent so I basically had that little bit there and away I went and even now when I do it I get exactly the same line to get the next one I need to know the distance between those two so that took a bit of measuring off the photos and to work out on the photos to scale find anything of reference in the photo usually in heights not lengths because lengths tend to be perspective and they change but if you find a height on a photo right a height at any position will be consistent so if you can find a couple of points of reference points on the hull that sort of thing you can get a measurement of the photo say it's three centimeters and then you measure your um, waterline and it's one centimeter okay and then you come and check on your model but your model it is you know one and a half centimeter so therefore you're only going to need a half centimeter it's just a little bit of math a little bit of scale i'm prepared now to start adding the extra detail to the bow so I've got a rule, I've got a pencil, I've got some glue. I've got this stock sprue here. This is 0.5 millimeter round rod. Ideally half rod would be better, but this round rod will convert to half rod very quickly. And I'll show you how I've done that. So it's very thin. It's the same as what I've used here for that. Um, I think that would probably would be a wire actually for that long long wire that runs over the booms so you can see when it's when it's placed on there it's the width that matches the photos so looking at the photos I know there's a little beading line just below those portals and I have a beading line above those portals and then there's one just above the edge here but they all space out very evenly so it's probably worth at this stage just doing some measurements to see what we've got here so just below that portal, port hole, to just above that other line is about 21. So my three lines, if they're going to basically space out evenly, they'll be there just below that one, and then seven just above that one, and then 21 there. So yeah, that works. That will give me a nice even run of that. So I'll need to mark those in. I mean, you could just eyeball the whole thing, but it's kind of worth having a line to work from. Now, obviously, it doesn't go through the horses there, okay? So it just runs up to against them, and there'll be a shield here as well, which is the sort of like the heraldic shield to identify the ship. So it will need to go from there to there. So just having a line there is going to make sure that I get it level and I know where it's going to go. Now there aren't very many clear pictures for the port side. I did the starboard side the first time, but you'd follow the same theme and you'd, you know, it'd have to do something very similar. So we know it does run all the way along here. So it'll run up to about say there. Okay. So those, those two lines work more than likely. It'll be between these horses here, the horse holes, which the, um, that's where the anchors come out. Okay, so that is my whole line there. And I require three pieces. Now, there's this one that is above here. So again, that will run up to the horse and it comes pretty well close to the bow. So I'm just gonna watch my level here because remember, everything is level with that plimsoll line. So you've got that as a reference. That was the whole reason for doing that. Now it is a bit tricky doing this with a rule. You probably could do it better with a tape because the rule is, well, there you go, the rule will tend to slide. If you made a mistake, it's better to make it now. We're only penciling things because we can erase that. Okay, so yeah, it was a bit wobbly at that point. Not good, so pencil eraser, we can get rid of any problems before they um, Come too difficult. The last thing was glue smears everywhere because you, you put the thing in the wrong position. So here 
well we know it's got to match just above those portals so I can probably port holes why do I keep saying portals port holes should put my teeth in today goodness me Harry now remember these ones here it didn't actually go past those it only sort of went up to so there roughly so that's the line and it just about touches the top of those port holes so that's a line so that one will be fairly correct then the bottom one here well that is just above that stroke line so that one's probably the easiest to do because we know where the stroke line is we've got it got above it it's hardly worth marking because you've got that stroke line there to basically give you a reference so as long as I get it spaced away it should be correct so all right that gives me a feeling for that. I could draw in these these bottom ones. I'll do them now. I, I um, these would be the parts that get scribed. Now for the scribing, what I did was to work it out is I worked at a tangent to the top deck, right? So a tangent top deck, so right angles, right? Which means I'm not going parallel to the bow because the bow's got a bit of rake on it. So working at a tangent to the top deck, and that's pretty easy to do. Like you just line up with your rule. And say with this four, it doesn't matter what one you use, make sure that you're the same either side, you're at the four mark, and then you should be at right angles, okay? So what I did was I did one at every porthole. So there, and this will be just from that stroke line below. We're not putting plating up the top there, we're putting those little in. So there it is, there's my first mark. My second porthole is there. Getting that to sit tangent. If you know, it's like a T square, you can actually rest it on there and away you go. So there's that one. And just keep going. Bring out where they are. Try and get it as level as possible. Or as right as possible. And just work my way through. It was just a way to give some spacing that is visually um, connected to something in the model, even though it'll be sort of kind of subconscious. People won't realise that's at the portal. It'll just, you know, it's a way of doing it. So that's not one. So the next one's there. And on you go. Now, this is a good method to do it in pencil first. Because as long as you're not pushing too hard, I'm using a very soft pencil here. It's only an HP, right? So soft pencil, it easily erases off. So any mistakes, you know. So it's best to get that whole thing now because if you're just scribing straight into it and then you go, oh no, I've missed one or I'm all out of alignment, it's too late. You're going to have to fill that all up and sand and paint and this whole lot of work. But if we're just doing it in pencil, if we go, oh, hang on, that one's a bit skew. I don't like that one. It hasn't worked. Yeah, I'll get rid of that one and I'll do that better or, you know, or they're going down too far, I'll only run them to the waterline maybe, and that's it. Next I need to convert this rod of plastic, which is only 0.5 millimeters in diameter, but I want to make it a half rod, only sort of half a circle. Now, it's not that hard, you just got to work it out. And what I found is, if I put this rod on a block, and I used my cutting knife, and again, my weight my method my knife it, it'll be different for everyone but for me all i had to do two three four five six it's probably a little hard to see but this actually now has a slightly flat side and a slightly curved side you can feel it when you run your fingers over it you can feel where i've scraped so you know that's the flat edge and the thing is once it goes on it makes sense because it sits flat and that's what you're trying to do. So I've got a little bit here that I, I can now use on the model. So we'll measure this section here and put that piece in. Now I could use a rule and measure it, but it's easier for me just to mark that and then I'll cut that piece to shape. And now that tiny little flat thing there, and again, I can run my finger over and figure out which is the flat side, that's the flat side. So that will now sit there. Now it is a bit fiddly, so once you've sort of got it in place, 
what I find is it's good to get some Tamiya Thin and just tap the end if the whole thing won't move. Okay. And using some tweezers, you've got a little bit of time just to jig it. Having that pencil mark there really helps because now sort of things are moving, you're putting things in place. It's good to know that you know you haven't got it all skewed because you're looking at so many things you can make a big mistake. So knowing that's sitting on that line, here it goes. And then a gentle tap, that's it. It's as easy as that. So there we have it, two of my little strip lines are in and they've already added a bit more detail and definition to this, this um, bow. Now this long one here I'll have to use the same method, I put this one in, then I'll uh, attach one end and then drag it all the way along and then tap in the other end and then cut it off on the model. That kind of, that works well. And then it's just a matter of repeating the process, I've only got a few more to do. So let me get on with those. And I'll finish this all up and then we can get on to the scribing. my strips all in place and straightened if there's any little fingerprints or any marks you get in with some um, this is some very fine 3m sort of sanding sponge just get in and give it a gentle sponge I was worried on the other side with there was quite a few little marks and things and especially the Tamiya thin seems to leave all these horrible sort of splashes everywhere but once you get your primer on it all disappears and the thing looks fine and you're going to put a wash on that and get a bit of shading anyway. Now's a good time to drill out the portholes because before I'm basically pushing things down and dropping in gunk and, and scrapings and glue and everything. That's not a good idea. You'd have to re-drill your portholes again. Now, if you've never done these before, you work out the size bit that fits the hole that's in the kit because there'll always be a marking or a hole in the kit. And then at right angles to the ship, but also right angle to the side of the deck. So no, not right angle to the center line, but right angle to the deck. So it will basically be curving as you go around. So the edge of the deck or the hull, if you like, the gunnel, that probably is the correct word for it. So right angles to the gunnel. That's where your porthole is. Now you can use an electric device to do this. I don't, because honestly, one, they don't take long, and I find it kind of therapeutic. I usually just put the music on, start drilling, and just zone out. And I don't mind it. I kind of zen the whole thing, you know. It's um, it's quite relaxing. And the thing is, I don't like the electric tools because I just tend to have disasters with them. They um, they burn out. So when you're doing the ones down here, just be careful because the side of the hull does curve up right the side of the hull usually curves up so just make sure you're also perpendicular to that side of the hull 
So you really, here you might have been like that, here you'll be slightly up. So just always just be mindful of where you're drilling, what you're doing. Another reason, if you're doing the electric one, you'll be just too um, prone to go zzz, 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 and they'll be all, you know, you'll have them all exactly the same. In the scheme of things, it may not matter because by the time this is all glued up, who knows? But sometimes if you're on real fragile areas like this, and if you're not drilling correctly, you'll split the plastic. So there we go. So they all drill out, and it's easy set. And you can see once they're drilled, they're much more pronounced once they're holes than they are there. So I'll just keep going through this little spot there that I missed. Needs a little bit of touch up, so just a matter of getting in with the 3M. Give me a light sand. All that's left there is a bit of a Tamiya mark. They'll be fine. All right. I'll get those holes drilled later, but let's scribe this section. Now we mark the lines which are going to come down from the hull, and they kind of look funny at this angle, but they are correct. If you look at the ship side on, they should be absolutely perpendicular to that deck. That's what we're going for. What we also need is some going this way. So I'm not going to worry too much about the lower hole. It's too much to mark out. There's too many curves. I'm not going to worry about it. I just wanted my bow to look a bit more interesting. So if I measure this, it's 12 millimeters. Okay, 12 millimeters. So what I'll do is I'll mark at four millimeters and eight millimeters, and that will give me three points, well, three shapes, two lines to scribe. So I won't need to scribe this one. That's going to be basically held by the blimsel line. You could if you like, but just in case your taping's not perfect, I wouldn't at the moment. So line this up and getting it parallel to that straight line up there. This is always quite tricky. Very gently mark your line. How does that look? Yep, that's not too bad. And again, I want this one down here. So again, I'll just hold my rule parallel. If you need to, put a couple of measuring points on there. All right, so that is the look that I want to get because that is what I did here. All right, so you can see three panels, one, two, three, and just two scribe lines between. Now you'll need either a scribing tool or I've used a corner on the cob holder for many years, but this one's nice because it does not require much weight. It's very sharp, so I can just very gently. I don't want huge, great big troughs here, just gentle, lines that are just going to break the surface so they'll just catch the um, the paint and the wash and they'll look nice. Now you need to be comfortable when you're scribing because if you're in an awkward position and you're trying to scribe then your body and your hand will go to the natural position and pull away from whatever you're doing. So you need to figure out what is my best thing. So for me that's how I scribe, that angle, right? So I need it at that angle that I that naturally I feel like you know pulling at. That's why I've even turned this upside down because that works better for me. So all right now here because this is relatively flat on the edge that I'm going to do I can use my metal rule. So we'll do that for here. So setting my scribe up on my pencil line there that's correct. Pencil line here a little bit over. That's it. Okay, now holding that firmly, it's just a matter of a very gentle, okay, and that's it, that's all there is. You can feel it, but you can hardly see it. One way to see it, to see how your scribe has been, is I find is to go over with the light sanding book, because then it kind of pops up as a white line. don't know if you can see that there, but it actually appears as a white line. So you know, oh yeah, that's about right. That's good. All right, let's do the other one. There's only two here, so they're not too hard to do. Measure it up to them, being firm, and try and hold it in the middle. If you hold it at one side, it'd be great when you start, and then just the gentle pressure of the knife, that side can pull away. So that looks pretty good there. That's all I need. That's as easy as that. 
I'm not trying to get airfix like panel lines. I'm going for very thin. So those two are good. All right. Now with the curves, although I'll probably do this with a rule, but we'll just do one of these with a curve because curve can be tricky because your rule won't sit on it. Okay. So one way around that is actually use some tape and you can buy dedicated scribing tape. And I got some and honestly, I couldn't see the difference between it and normal tape. Some people use dyno tape, you know, the stuff for making labels. And that kind of works. That works too. But all you need, you know, if you're not, it depends how much you're gouging into the line. If it's only a gentle line like I'm doing here. You only need something that's going to give you a guide. So there we go. There's our guide. Okay. And again, what is my most comfortable way to get to this? Well, more like that, Harry. Okay. So yeah, am I comfy like that? Like test it in the air first. Yes, I'm comfy. And I've got this whole thing resting here, so something firm. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run along the edge of that. So I need to make sure that's down hard. And I'm only going to gently rest against the edge of that. Okay. And I can feel it, but you can't see it. So again, give it a bit of a light sand, see what happens. Yeah, it's there. It won't come up until you paint. So that tiny little scribe line is there. So my only advice if you're scribing is be comfortable, be gentle, be patient. Don't do it if you're stressed or you're too worn out or you're tired. You'll make big mistakes. Same with doing fiddly things like this. Best to be in the right mood to do it. But with the scribing, make sure that you're going the direction that your hand will move. It's like you're painting. No point painting at a weird angle when you're pushing because your body doesn't move that way. It's not natural. So work out, is that a natural motion, you know? And if that's naturally how you go, then that is how the scribe will go. And it'll be easy. You won't be fighting your muscles. You won't tense up. And then either use a rule or use some sort of tape, even if it is scribing tape. And then you can just gently run along because your hand is going to be relaxed and you can just run that line. All right, I've got quite a bit to do there to finish that off. But I will eventually end up with the same look that I have here, which I was very happy with. So that is where I am with the Sailors at the moment. And I will finish up all those little bits and pieces and probably get a coat of primer on this for next time. And then I can show you this trick of putting on the plimsoll line using a Posca pen. And we'll also get the hull red and a few other things. It'll start to come to life. I'll need to get into the secondary armament as well, because that needs to go in before I can actually put the decks on. All right, plenty left to do, but I hope you enjoyed this video about doing the little upgrades of getting plimsoll line marked, scribing, and basically adding all those little strips there to improve the look of hull. It's not difficult. It is actually fun. Just make sure that you're relaxed and you're in a good state of mind when you're doing it. All right, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Udini.